MySQL Workbench Enterprise Backup MySQL Workbench has integrated some functions available on the operating system and MySQL Enterprise Backup MEB, to provide an easy-to-use backup solution for MySQL. MEB is an enterprise tool, so the backup feature is not available on the Workbench Community Edition. It is integrated under the MySQL Enterprise section of the Management tab once the connection is opened. The online backup option is used to set up a backup profile where you can define what should be backed up, where it should be stored, and the frequency in which the backup operations should occur. The backup recovery option is used to restore the server to a specific point in time by using one of the backups done through the online backup option. There are some conditions that should be met in order to access the MEB options in Workbench. First, MEB is supported on connections to both local and remote Linux or Mac servers, but only for local Windows servers. That is, if you are backing up a Windows server, you must run Workbench on the same machine. The connection should be done with the root MySQL user. The path to the MySQL server configuration file must be correctly set on the System Profile tab of the Connection Settings dialog. There are some additional requirements for MEB on Linux and Mac connections. On remote connections, remote management should be configured through SSH. Finally, the user running Workbench must be part of the group to perform pseudo operations. If any of these conditions is not met, and you select one of the MEP options in Warbench, you will get the panel with the proper error message. On the other hand, if all the conditions are met, you will be directed to the overview panel, except for the first time, when you will be directed to the settings panel. It is very important to let clear that all the configuration done through the MEB interface in Workbench is stored on the server. This includes the MEB configuration, the backup profiles, and the scheduled jobs. In the same way, all the backup operations are executed remotely on the server using the configuration set. Workbench doesn't need to be running to keep the backup system working as configured. One of the first things that occur when you select any of the MEB options in Workbench is that Workbench verifies the existence of the master configuration file. If it doesn't exist, it will redirect you to the settings panel so you can provide the requirements to have a fully operable backup system. Let's take a look to those requirements. Path to the MEB executable. To enable the MEB feature in Workbench, it is needed that you have the MySQL Enterprise Backup installed on the target server. You can download MEV from either Livery or MyOracle support. Workbench will try to identify the path to the MEV executable on the target server and automatically fill this field. However, you can browse the target server to locate the executable in case Workbench fails on the auto-detection. 
Workbench supports only the most recent two versions of the MVP executable. Once a valid MVP executable is identified, Workbench will display a message indicating the version of the configured executable. Backup Home Directory Workbench requires a folder on the server to store the backup information. Created backup profiles will be stored here, and it will also be used as the default location to store the backup data for each profile. You can either type the path to the target folder in the server, use the file browser to locate it, or create one. MySQL account for backup process. MEB requires a MySQL account with specific permissions to execute the backup operations. This section offers several ways to accomplish this. They depend on the information set on the user and password fields. If a non-existing account is set in the backup username field, a button will be shown to allow creating a MySQL account compliant with the MEB requirements. Clicking on it will display a dialog asking for the user and password to be used on the new account. If an existing account is set, but the password is either not specified or is incorrect, a button will be shown to allow setting a new password for that specific account. Clicking on it will display a dialog requesting the new password for the account. Once the password is set, the account will be validated to be compliant with the MEV requirements. If a valid account and password is set, but it's not compliant with the MEV requirements, a button will be shown to allow fixing the permissions for the user to make it compliant. Clicking on it will display a dialog listing the permissions that need to be granted to the account to make it compliant with the MEV requirements. To proceed updating the account, click on the Confirm button. Once all the requirements are satisfied, you will be able to click the OK button to save the configuration. At this point, the settings panel will be closed, going back to the overview panel. If you want to update any of the settings, you just need to click on the settings button in the top right corner of the screen. It will take you back to the settings panel. The overview panel can be considered the dashboard for online backup operations in Workbench. There are three sections with different purposes on this panel. Backup jobs. A backup job is a configuration file that will be used to store information about what data will be backed up, where that data will be stored, and when the backup operations will occur. The backup profile section allows managing the backup profiles configured for the server. Backup job details. This section displays information about the backup state of a selected backup job. The information at the top is taken from the settings panel, while the information below is related to the selected backup. It includes data about when the last backup operations were done and when the next backup operations will be executed. Recent activity. This section provides historical information about the backup operations performed on the server. Let's create a sample backup profile to go through the available settings. The main backup profile panel contains a name and a description fields that will be used to identify the backup profile among others on the same server and also to provide a description for the backup profile. The label beside the backup profile name field provides information at a glance about how the profile is configured. Shows the backup type in terms of contents. It could be either full or partial. It shows the scheduling status of the profile. Could be not scheduled, full, incremental, or both. Schedule tab. On a typical environment, it is common that the backups are done in a regular basis. The scheduling options allow configuring the frequency in which the backup operations will be performed. To do so, 
Workbench takes advantage of the task scheduling functions available on each operating system. In the case of Windows, it uses the Windows Scheduler to achieve this. In the case of Linux and Mac, it uses the Chrome tab. It is important to note that the scheduled jobs are scheduled with the operating system user that will be executing the backup, usually the MySQL user. MEB is capable of executing backups in different ways. Let's take a look at full and incremental backups. A full backup is a slow process. The data selected for the backup operation will be totally added into the backup. The data in a full backup can be restored into the server right away. On the other hand, incremental backups are for much quicker than full backups. This is because only the changes that occur after the last backup operation will be added into the backup. The data in an incremental backup needs to be merged into a previous full backup in order to be restored. The MEB interface in Workbench allows scheduling both full and incremental backups using separate tasks and frequencies in order to provide a flexible framework. For example, we could create a profile that performs full backups in a weekly basis and incremental backups in a daily basis. There are several options to define the frequency in which a backup operation should be performed. Month. To execute a backup in a monthly basis, you need to identify the day of the month and time when you want the backup to start. Week. Using this frequency, you can choose the specific days of the week when you want the backup to be done and also the hour when you want the backup to start. Day. It's used to specify a daily basis backup frequency. In this case, you just need to define the specific time when the backup should start every day. Hour. This is used to specify that the backup operation should be done every hour. In this case, you need to specify the minute when you want the backup to start. Content tab. The content tab allows specifying what should be included into the backup. The backup full content option is used to include all the schemas and tables on the MySQL instance. The select objects to backup option is used to configure a partial backup where only specific schemas and or tables on the MySQL instance will be included. When the full content option is selected, no additional settings are needed. When partial backups is selected, a warning message will be shown explaining at a high level some things that need to be considered on partial backups. Click on the Help button to get directed to the documentation about this. If you still want to continue configuring a partial backup, just click on the OK button. When configuring a partial backup, the box at the left will show the list of schemas that can be backed up. If you click on the arrow beside the schema, you will see the list of tables that belong to that schema. The box at the right will show the list of schemas and tables that are part of the backup data. You can move objects across the two boxes by selecting the object and clicking on the arrow buttons in the middle. It is possible that when you work on this configuration, you get some schemas at the right box. This means already part of the backup, even if you didn't put them there. Those are there because they are stored physically on the system table space, which is backed up all the time, no matter the configuration. If you attempt to remove those, you will get a message explaining this. The show system schemas checkbox is used to also display the system schemas like performance schema. Options tab. The configuration on this tab is used to modify the default behavior of the backup process. You will note 
that the default backup directory is a subfolder under the backups home directory configured on the general configuration panel for MEB. The name of this subfolder is not other than the name of the backup profile. In order to keep MEB data in a central place, it is recommended that you use the default folder. However, you have the option to change it. The compress option can be used to save space. It affects only in ODV data files on full backups. It is common that during the backup operation, there are changes on the database. The apply log operation is needed to apply those changes on the backup once it is done. This operation must be done to let the backup data in a state that is valid to perform a restore operation. By selecting this option, the log will be applied once the backup is done. If not selected, the apply log operation will have to be done later, before a restore operation. Once you define all the options for the backup profile, click on the Save and Schedule button to save the backup profile and to schedule the needed tasks on the target server. If you need to go back and update a configured backup profile, you just need to select the profile from the list and click on the Configure Job button. If a profile is selected on the list, the Execute Now and Execute Now incremental buttons will be enabled. This allows executing a full or incremental backup operation using the selected profile. If you right click on a backup job in the list, you will get a pop up menu with the functions to create a new job, configure an existing job, execute a backup with the selected job, execute an incremental backup with the selected job. When any of these options is selected, the result is exactly the same as if the buttons on the main panel were clicked. The Execute Backup to Image File option will execute the backup operation, but will save it into a single image file. If this option is selected, you will be prompted for the target image file name. Finally, the Copy Backup Command to Clipboard option will copy to the clipboard the command line needed to start a full backup on the command line of the target server. It is very important to be clear that any backup operation is done on the target server and not locally. If you started a backup operation on demand using any of the buttons on the overview panel, a dialog will be shown displaying the progress of the backup operation. This dialog can be closed safely as the process is actually running on the server. When the overview panel is active, it will be polling the server to identify possible running backup operation. When a running backup operation is detected, the overview panel will display information about the running job. A button will be shown to allow looking at the progress of the operation. Each line on the recent activity table represents a backup operation. If you right click on any entry, you will get an option to view the log for the selected operation.